Perhaps no one knows the strange dynamic between Daniel Cohen and her mother, Jennifer Archambeau, better than Katie Tua. Katie's son, Mikey, dated Danielle, and Katie's in this world as well, although on the ethical side of it. Katie, thanks for being with us tonight. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. How would you describe Jennifer Archambeau? As a child, she she's she thinks like a 16 year old child she she's not very responsible um she she doesn't think things through she's impulsive um she's she's dangerous I think she lacks empathy as well. I think she lacks perspective and I think, I think she lacks a lot of things, but. Uh, Michael, you've been in this world and you tried to actually help and manage um, Daniel Cohen and uh, Jennifer Archambeau as well. Uh, describe the sort of destructive culture in which they thrive, it seems. You know, it's, it's like, it's kind of crazy. Um, they just created this, ecosystem of around them that is very like toxic to be around and i think katie can speak to that a lot uh that is causing destruction in other people's lives regardless of you know ultimately what they need and, and like what jennifer wants to happen is gonna happen at all cost and at any expense whether that's you know my well-being mikey's well-being katie's well-being I, I think i saw firsthand you know just from the little bit i was around how Jen's manipulation of like certain situations would affect other people. And I would watch Danny like call Mikey outside her house just to make Mason do something or vice versa. Like it's just this very toxic dynamic that I believe all stems from, you know, Jen's inability to like properly raise a child, frankly. And I saw and those. Oh. Go ahead, Katie. I was just going to further on that, that, Michael saw it with Mason and there were red flags for me in the beginning when Mikey and Danielle started, they weren't even dating yet. Mikey was just getting ready to turn 16. So um, you could tell that they liked each other and um, he actually asked her out on his 16th birthday, but we seen those same behaviors out of Jen and Danielle in the very beginning with the boyfriend prior to Mikey. Right. So everything that Michael is describing with Mason, we went through that with the prior boyfriend. So it, it just becomes a cycle, I believe. And I think that they just repeat it constantly. Describe the relationship, Katie, between your son, Mikey and Danielle. Um, you know, Mikey had just turned 16 and that's when he asked her out was on his, on her, on his 16th birthday. But one year prior to this, they had met at a musically event out here in LA. And I think that Danielle definitely thought Mikey was cute back then, but Mikey was still very, immature as far as he had he hadn't matured yet enough to know what that meant as far as I think she's pretty but he was still young and so Danielle at that point dated one of our inner circle um, friends and or Mikey's inner circle friends and then when that became when that situation ended i think they always kind of gravitated toward one another they stayed friends as a matter of fact that's what kind of brought us back around again is when um jen was moving and asked for some help and we went to go help them and you could tell that you know mikey and danielle we're friends as well as Jojo and Danielle. Also do you, you know, being do you out in that, LA. <clears throat> oh, sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, being out here in LA, 
um, I'm not a single mom and, but out here in LA, it was just me and two boys. So I wanted to help a mom that was out here doing the same thing. And so we went over to help them move and I could tell that they liked one another, but there was some red flags and there were some conversations that were happening behind closed doors as far as me talking with my son about just making sure that, you know, this was someone that he wanted to spend more time with. Um, and Jen, it seemed like she was very unorganized while we were, while we were moving and the, and the homes seemed very, um, disorderly. They seemed very dirty. They seemed messy. Um, her, her, her son didn't seem to have a whole lot of respect for her. These are things I questioned because ultimately that was something that my son was around right. and, but Mikey just, you know, he really, he really felt strongly about Danielle. I think that it was Mikey's first love Mikey, you know, there's a lot of things that have been said and that will be said because there is a pattern of behavior um, on their end. But I'm here to say that Mikey 100% genuinely was in love and cared for her so deeply. And there were a lot of very sweet things that I seen um, throughout the time that they were together between the two of them, where they just liked hanging out. And really they were just back, you know, when they first started hanging out, they were just kids hanging out who liked each other. And that's looking really back. Weird. Looking back, Katie, do you think Mikey was duped, was taken advantage of by Danielle and, and maybe even I Jennifer? Do. I definitely do. I think that I, I definitely think that actually I would like to rephrase that. I think that Mikey and Danielle both were taken advantage of by Danielle's mother. I think that they never had a shot at this. I, I think that she had her hands in so deep and neither one of these young people had a shot at anything normal. And what impact did this have on Mikey? I mean, Mikey has spent the last three years just not Mikey. In the beginning, he was very happy and, um, you know, excited and was enjoying being in LA, um, pursuing his dreams. And he went from this really happy kid who loved his family and was enjoying this new person in his life to just absolutely miserable. He started, his, still to this day, his fingernails are almost non-existent. Um, he's very, he's a, he's very quiet. He, you know, he started telling us less. He, he has never had to lie to his father or I or his brother ever. We are not ever going to judge him. But he just became someone we didn't know and someone we were really worried about. On several occasions, you know, we saw him cry and break down. He didn't know what to do. I mean, he was, he was a little boy with so much on his plate. And he didn't understand a lot of what was going on. And he, he just wanted to be able to love Danielle. Michael, what does this say about the big picture here, the culture of these young media influencers? Uh, you know, it's, it's, it seems it's vastly unregulated. And even when parents are involved, like Katie, who clearly care for their children, the potential for damage here is great mm -hmm. and it, on, a it's young, like, on a young psyche. It's so frightening. Uh, it's something Katie and I have talked about, too. I think it's it's like so relevant now that we are seeing, you know, this access to, to fame, if you will, through online um, media and all these parents are seeing opportunities and, you know, utilizing their children and, and not every parent in social media is like that. There are great parents. I think Katie's probably a great mother who, you know, got into this for all the right reasons. When you look at someone like 
Jen, on the other hand, you know, it gives you a good example of, of how dark it can really get. And, you know, talking to other people, it kind of seems premeditative, if you will, that Jen completely consciously made a decision to, to do the things that she's done and like has no idea what it's done to her daughter, uh, which is really frightening. Uh, and I think overall, it's something that we have to learn from. We have to take accountability for, have a conversation, stop ignoring it, stop taking paychecks simply because, you know, you think it's okay to get paid to do this. If we don't stand up and say something, it's just going to get worse and worse as more people, more parents, more kids want to be famous, more parents see opportunity. Like, it, it's always existed, I think. And now that it's become so mainstream, it's, it's really frightening. Katie, do you ever regret allowing Mikey to get involved in this? No, because even through the ups and the downs and the turmoil and people have no idea what our life has been like for three years, um, there's been a lot of good that's come out of it. And we have proven to one another that we are a strong family and we are always going to get through whatever is put in front of us that, you know, we're here for one another and that we love one another. And, you know, if our boys told us tomorrow that they didn't want to be out here anymore, we'd be okay with that. We don't, I guess that's the difference for, for us. We, you know, throughout those three years, we saw a lot of things and, the one thing that I felt like both Danielle and Mikey were lacking was time off, time doing something without a camera in front of them. When time to be came, a kid. Yeah. Correct. When we came to LA, my boys were both traditional um, actors, dancers. They, you know, social media really wasn't a big deal for us. It wasn't something that we had really opened up to. And then in the acting world, you started needing, you know, to have that following for certain auditions. So we were dabbling in it a little bit, um, but it wasn't a priority. We didn't, we weren't, we didn't feel like it was the end of the day if we didn't, you know, contribute in some way to social media because what people don't know is we were going to five auditions a day and I'd map it all out. And, you know, we'd go from one to the next. I had clothes in the back of the car, different resumes for different job auditions. Um, we were really gung ho about what we were doing out here. And I, I think that social media is what really changed it all. But at the end of the day, my kids, this is where they want to be. And as a family, we've now made this home. And I would like in a few years from now to be able to look back and say, we learned from this. Not only did we learn from it, but hopefully I can help another parent learn from it. That, you know, no amount of money is worth putting your child in a situation that is going to damage them. There have been allegations that Jennifer Archambeau misrepresented Danielle's age and encouraged sexual liaisons with her boyfriends, Mikey included, and that she may have induced a statutory rape situation. So that's a fairly serious charge, not against Mikey, but against Jennifer Archambeau. Well, I think she literally like sex traffics her daughter for like a, a lack of better. She did. Well, lie. that's an interesting question. In, in, and I want you to comment on that, Michael, in just a minute. But Katie, was your son dragged into an illicit sexual relationship by Daniel's mother? I definitely. I definitely believe that Jennifer encouraged certain behaviors and she did misrepresent um, how old Danielle and uh, Danielle was, and um, none of us had knowledge of it. Um, and and uh, until one year in, obviously, 
when we found out. But she was very inappropriate on on lots of levels as far as putting pressure on both of them to be with one another all the time and you know to it was almost like a it almost felt now looking back it was it's almost like a cult in a way because you know in in, in jennifer's mind in order to date her daughter you have to be with her daughter 24 hours a day seven days a week otherwise you don't love her you know there's these fancy vacations and these clothes that, you know, the matching clothes and the, this, this whole culture that goes along with someone who is dating her daughter. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've, I've saved every message that I've ever had with, with Jennifer. I've saved every email, every note to back up everything that I have to say, because I just don't want to be anything but truthful but she very much so gave my son this, this power when he would be with Danielle where he, or I would say more like pressure, where he was like the man of the house. He was 16 years old. Right. He, there's just so much about it that's inappropriate. It was all driven by Jennifer. I don't believe that, you know, like I said, if it was up to Danny and Mikey, they w- they just wanted to go to like the movies together and hang out with mm-hmm. friends and, you know, go to theme parks or, you know, be kids, whatever. be teenagers. Right. In like groups, they liked to be with other people. But that's the other thing is that Jen doesn't want, you're isolated when you're in a relationship with her daughter. And these are all things that I noticed along the way. And you know, there's this misconception. I think people thought that I liked Jennifer in the beginning. And the and the reality of it is, is that I didn't know Jennifer. I was always respectful to Jennifer, but I'm a mom first. And I always raise concern where it was needed. And on several occasions, what people don't know is that I left many times with my son saying, no, absolutely not. Um, and this isn't going to happen or, or no, I'm not okay with this. Unfortunately for me, and this isn't an excuse, but I carry a whole lot of, I I do carry a whole lot of guilt, um, with that first year because I had gotten sick, but didn't know what was going on with my, you know, I didn't know what, what I was sick with at that point. My hair was falling out. My teeth were falling out. I was so tired. I was falling asleep at stoplights. I was just doing everything I could to get through day-to-day life. And I was trying to mask that. So our family, because we weren't from California, we were just out here, you know, staying. We had a home back in Seattle, Washington, a family, their dad, my husband, all of that. You know, we had our network back there. So for us, when we were out here, it was like we were out here to do something because we were making large sacrifices as a family to to provide this for our children. And I think that, of course, you know, that was taken advantage of a lot of times. And I definitely started to notice it more and more. And I started to voice my concern more and more. And Michael, do you think, Michael, do you think that Jennifer Archambeau is trafficking her daughter, Danielle Cohn? Without a doubt. um, I'm confident that that Jennifer is committing what I would consider sex trafficking. Um, She not only like encourages, but I've I've seen her cross a line in several occasions. Not only like as an adult, I've seen her make boys uh, in social media, her lock screen on her phone. I believe she had like some sort of crush on Mikey at some point, but I've watched her put people in situations where like, for example, she would encourage Mason to stay in Danny's room, Mason being an adult and now knowing that Danielle is, is 15, that's a four year difference and encouraging a situation to happen. I've watched her like take Danny to the store to buy uh, contraceptives and like these situations where that's like ultimately where I was like, this is insane. Um, I've 
I've watched her continue to be like, you need to get a boyfriend. You need to post this. So, you know, it's my belief that she puts on this act, I guess, to make Danny seem older and then encourage her to have relationships that are beneficial to Jen's goal at the end of the day, whether that's more followers or make more money, whatever that may be. Katie, did you ever go to Jennifer and say, this is just not right? What you're doing to Danielle, what you're doing to Mikey, you got to stop it. It's not worth all the money you're making. A hundred percent. I. Um, and what did she say to you? Yes, of course. One one thousand percent I did. So I want to I want to I also want to I want to be able to say that I was only around for one year. That I mean, that's a long time, but I was only around for one year out of three out of three years. And in that one year, after, you know, a few months in, I would get phone calls from my son if they were, you know, out shopping, if they were out doing something. Um, and it was very strange because um, he would be very upset and he would say, Mom. I don't know what to do. And I'd say, honey, well, what, what's going on? And he'd say, well, we had to take a picture for Danielle's social media today. And, you know, Jen, she'd be in like a cute pair of jeans and a crop top and Jen would pull her shirt down. So there was a lot of cleavage showing or, you know. Sexualizing this child. I, I remember one time Danielle was in our car. I don't remember where we were going, but I remember it so well. And she posted and there was this bikini picture and I almost died. She showed me it after she posted it and I didn't know what to say. I was, I was in shock. And she said, well, my mom likes me to be sexual um, or sexual. And I was like, well, you don't need to show all of your body to be pretty. You're a very pretty. She girl. said her mom likes her to be sexual. Correct. And I remember the position of this photo. She was at the pool, but she was leaning back and it was a bikini. And I was just like, I, I just couldn't even believe what was being said. Knowing and the metrics, Katie, as you do in this world, what do you suppose Jennifer has made money wise by exploding, by exploiting Danielle? Millions, 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 because I'm here to tell you, I can't disclose um, legally what um, Mikey's contract was for for Bang, but I do know that I do know that she's had several different opportunities and she's made millions. And, and how much of that money do you suppose has been set aside for Danielle's future? I bet you not a lot. I'm going to say that there was a situation where she finally got a Coogan account because um, I had expressed some concerns because, again, we came from the traditional background. So we had, for our boys, Coogan trust accounts. And when we first met them, she did not. And I didn't understand because it was social media versus the trust account. A Coogan trust account comes from the old Hollywood child. Jackie Coogan. Right. Yes. And, and so uh, is money set aside for the child when the child is older? But it's 15 percent. It's not even that much. And so I was a little bit in shock that she didn't have one. But there was a situation that arose at, at some point that she eventually had to get one. And I think it's to my understanding that there's. Again, I don't want to misrepresent something, but I think that there might be eight hundred thousand dollars in that. Um, if that gives you any indication, what fifteen percent is of only certain um, endorsements that have come in after this um, this age thing has been brought um, brought up. I think that there were closer eyes looking at things. And then I, I believe it's to my understanding that she eventually got a Coogan account. The one thing that I will say from the very get-go, my boys had both had checking accounts 
with debit cards or savings accounts with the debit um, debit card, and you can have them at the age of 14. Both of my boys got those at the age of 14. So when they made money out here, they it could also go into their account. You have to be on the account with the child until they're 18, and then at 18, you know, you can be removed from it. So my boys had debit cards, so when they would go and do things, I never quite understood why Danielle didn't have a debit card at 15 years old. And I was told by Jennifer that it was because in her parents, um, in their parenting agreement, it wasn't allowed that Danielle's father would not allow it, which made no sense to me. But again, that was their personal information. So I just kind of said, okay, you know, that's strange. Something that doesn't, that just doesn't make sense to me. And I've so, watched the biggest, go ahead, Michael. Well, I've watched Danielle take, like ask her mom for her debit card. And it, it's always Jen's card because Jen lost it in the ocean when Danny was on the jet ski and needed to get gas for, for this jet ski. I've watched, uh, you know, she has like paid invoices or Venmo. Everything is from Jen. So it's like, and there's it's all from, it's all from these. I'm sorry, Michael, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but it's all from, I'll tell you, it's all from like these, a cash app, a PayPal, all mm -hmm. of this stuff it is PayPal going card. Mm -hmm. It's never in, in, in Danny's name. And it's always in, in like discreet ways of payment that are not like through a financial institution. When I was 14, I had a bank account with my mom's name on it. And then when I turned 18, her name, her name was taken off of it. You know, uh, like the basics of someone making even, you know, a minimal amount of their own income are not in place for Danielle, um, which is you know, I expressed my concern to Matt even and was like, where is her money? Is it in a trust account? Brands like, well, I'm sure, you know, NBC cannot yep. pay a minor directly. Like that, that's against the law. They can't yep. just pay a parent. It has to go to a trust account. Um, so it's definitely a situation that that was alarming for me as well. Katie, Can what's I the biggest, like tra what's, Katie, what's the biggest tragedy of all this for Danielle? That she's been robbed of so many things. She doesn't see it. And of course, she's going to, you know, see these interviews. And I, to this day, three years later, I could be mean and say, you know, horrible things, but I can't because she's a sweet girl. And she's been robbed of every chance to be just a normal child. She wants to do some of these things for sure. And that's fine, but not to this extent. She has no idea how bad things really are because she's just mm -hmm. adapted because it's her, she's, it's her environment. It's the normal to her. So for her, it's like, why are you guys making this a big deal? Because she knows no other way. But I'm here to tell you that deep down, that little girl, she knows something's not right. She knows that things could be different. She, there was one time, I think, you know, and all the time that they the kids were together, she got to spend the night at our house, I believe, like twice. And at our house, there were rules, you know, I, Again, I'm not perfect. I'm new to this age parenting as well and, and being out in LA, but I'm like, the, you're not going into a bedroom with the door closed or, you know, like they were just, and, and there was never an issue. They would like, the, her and Mikey both would, I'd put them on separate ends of the couch and give them each their laptop because they both were in a homeschool program and make food for them. And they were fine with that. And we'd snuggle up and watch television together. No social media, you know, nothing to, to the internet, but that would get her in trouble. I remember one time she spent the night at my house and it was very early in the morning and my eyes woke up and she was like, I was like, oh my gosh, she's standing right above me. And I was like, what's going on? She goes, can you, she knows she whispered, can you come and help me? She said, um, I got to get my pictures taken because she didn't want to hurry up and have to go home right away because her mom hates to lose control and she felt powerless if she was with me. But now I'm understanding why she felt that way because she felt like if she wasn't there to monitor things, 
she wanted to make sure Danielle didn't slip and tell me something I shouldn't know. So, and what did Jennifer do to victimize Mikey? I, I'll tell you, Mikey, and I have the proof. I have all of the proof. Mikey has always had a cell phone that's been paid by his father and I still to this day. We still pay for it. It's still the same phone number as the first one he got in L.A. Um, it's still in working condition, but she wouldn't allow him to have that phone. She went and got it. Why was that? Because she wanted to go get him one on her plan. That she could control. Well, she was able then to see who he was texting, his location at all times. And she was able to know exactly what was going on at all times. And she held it over his head. I watched multiple times. I, she would be like, I'm going to turn off Mikey's cell phone plan. And I'm like, okay, why, why are you paying it? Yeah, like, why do you have that? And why is it such a thing that you're going to disconnect it? It's clearly because she wanted to be able to, like, have that power over Mikey um, and over Katie, for that matter. Because what mother doesn't want to be able to contact their child and know where they are? And I'm sure it's very easy to manipulate a situation when you're the only adult and the only form of communication is through you. And she could see everything he was doing. Um, it was- What kind of a person does that, Katie? Someone who is not right. I, I've come to believe that there has had to have, have, something had to have happened in Jennifer's childhood that has made her this way because I'm telling you right now as a mom, I just talking about it. I feel like I can't breathe. I'm, I mean, and I'm out, I feel like we're finally on the other side of it, but I sit back and think about, yes, today I have my son and he's going to be okay because he has me as a mom and, and his dad as a dad and his brother as a brother and anything that kid needs, we're going to make sure he has it counseling, whatever it is. But the reality of it is, is Daniel's, doesn't have the things that she needs. She doesn't have the things that she needs. When you look at those pictures in the videos of Danielle on social media, they're not just appealing to other teenage girls and boys. They're appealing to adult men who are predators. Correct. She. What doesn't... kind of a mother exposes her child to that? A mother that's making a lot of money off of what that young woman is doing. And she what do made, you as a mother, Katie, see as the absolute worst part of this for Danielle? You spent some time with her. You got to like her. You think she's a good kid who has I, I actually love Danielle. I, I what, love what Danielle. What happens to Danielle 10 years from now? Exactly. That's the problem. Here's the thing. Danielle's going to wake up one day and she's going to realize that all these people that she was told were so bad because they were trying to stick up for her. She's going to, there's going to be a, there's going to be a light switch that goes on and she's going to have been working since she was 12 years old and she doesn't have, you know, you would think she would be in a really good position, but she's still going to have to work very hard her whole life. And she's not going to be right. She's going to need so much counseling. And all of that lives forever on the internet. Every picture, every video, every image Everything. that is being Everything. exploited by bad humans Correct. who have a purient interest in this is out and there forever. She is going to, I mean, it's going to affect her, I believe, for the rest of her life. And I think that I just wish there was a way that she could come out and be honest and be able to tell the world, you know, this is, this is my truth. This is really how old I am. I wish she'd be able to get into some counseling, some family counseling. And if this is really what she wants to do, there's, there's a way to do it where there's balance and class. And she I don't know that Jen is going to let her, as long as Jen's in the picture, I know that it's, it, it's like very clear that Jen has it, not shown her daughter love or any attention. Like poor, poor Danny doesn't know 
what that else. is. That, yeah. And so like, because of that, she's already developing into a, a young woman who lacks some of the, the essential, you know, kind of figures in your life that form you into a, you know, a decent human being. And like, until Jen is out of the picture and Danny is with a loving family who is, wants to raise her and teach her and, and you know, actually show her how to, to be an adult, it's not going to happen. And that's what that's what's really heartbreaking. Yeah. And what about the also, big picture here? I want to ask you both this question uh, about the regulation here. I mean, obviously, this world is vastly unregulated. And you look at YouTube and what it allows. YouTube will limit monetization. Not that I care about that, but it says something about what it pays attention to. YouTube will limit monetization on one of my shows exposing this but allow monetization of the actual exploitation mm -hmm. of the young right. child, Danielle. And it right. makes no sense to me. Again, we do it because it's the right thing to do, not for money, but it says something about the platform. They should be more worried about the exploitation than the reporting of the exploitation, don't you think? I 100% agree with you. You know, when I was made aware of how, how old Danielle was, I was livid. Um, I was heartbroken, I felt betrayed. And then I put all of that energy and effort into doing right by Danielle and my son. And I contacted every everyone that I could think of. And it's amazing to me that I don't know, I can't speak for those other um, businesses and people, I guess it was their word against mine, but it felt at the time that they favored the Danielle situation because of a paycheck. I mean, they didn't mm -hmm. want to have to believe anything All else the because they were making a lot of money. And and the truth of the matter is, is that Danielle has another parent who's who's wants to be in her life. And he who's he afraid to speak that. out is yes. what I understand. Yes. Because and he'll be attacked by Jennifer. Jennifer is. And he doesn't want to lose his daughter because he is afraid, or as the story goes, that Jennifer will turn her against him. And it, it's like people have real, that. he has a career. People have jobs. Like yeah. Jen will use people like, Danny's following to manipulate her fans into believing a situation and then like silencing the victims of that family. And Danny just has to like agree with it because her mom has the accounts. And that's also just as scary. I mean, you know, I've had brands that don't want to speak to me because of this whole thing, which I think is interesting that, you know, they would go out of their way to use influence that negatively. Um, I've watched her to, you know, be like, if Mikey does this, I'm going to do this and like manipulate Mikey into a situation. I, one of the reasons I started to feel uncomfortable is I felt like Mikey was trapped when I would witness it. And that's why it's important that all of us collectively can use our voice because Katie's seen it outside of just this situation. And a lot of, of people in Hollywood are experiencing it. And it, it's literally the most like dystopian ecosystem in social media that exists. And we have a responsibility to step up. Closing Absolutely. thoughts, Katie. How do we fix this? I um, think Danielle's not the only one out there being exploited. Clearly, no, Danielle's not. She is not. I think that we have to do better. I think that we have to have something put in place. I mean, before um, Jackie Coogan, there was no laws about putting, you know, children in the entertainment industry's uh, money a portion of it to the side. I think the time has come that we have to do something and make a change somewhere that helps protect these kinds of situations. And we need to regulate it better. But I just don't know how that's going to happen because social media is such a private thing. You know, you're not on a set um, per se. You could be, the set could be in your home. And I don't know how it's wherever you are at the moment. Right. And so that's a, that's a scary thing. So I don't know how we necessarily work that. Social media is a gray area for sure, but there's got to be a way. There's well, Michael, I think one of the ways to do it is by having a discussion like the one we've had here this evening. I appreciate you both being a part of this. 
We will continue to report on this. Uh, Michael, final thoughts from you tonight. What, where do we go from here? I think I mean, it's you're important. In the industry. You make your living doing this, but again, you pointed the finger at people who are committing the exploitation. I think we've got to continue to have conversations like this. Um, those within the industry, myself and Katie included, need to be able to look objectively at situations and not just stand by and, and, and not say anything for fear or for, you know, what's going to happen? I'm going to lose this deal. No, it's like not worth it. Children's lives are at stake. We have got to do better as a society. We've got to do better. Platforms need to step up. Fans need to step up. You, you know, they're enabling it just as much. I think, you know, as a society, we've just got to do better. And having conversations like this is, is key to bringing awareness to these situations. Michael, Katie, thank you for joining me tonight. I appreciate it very much. We'll continue this conversation. And uh, thanks for everything you're trying to do here. Thank you, Chris. Thank you.